Morning class, so today we're going over chapter 38, Vehicle Extrication and Special Rescue. EMS Operations, knowledge of operational roles and responsibilities to ensure patient, public, and personal safety. Vehicle Extrication, safe vehicle extrication, use of simple hand tools. Introduction, you usually not be responsible for rescue and extrication. Rescue involves many different processes and environments, requires training beyond the EMT level. This chapter teaches basic extrication concepts. Um, usually fire will be the one doing the uh, extrication. I know we've talked about the differences in types of engines and trucks uh, for the fire. For firefighters, uh, the ones with the big ladders are called a truck company. And that's gonna be your extrication um, team. When you guys have car accidents or you need a, some other type of extrication process. Safety extrication requires mental and physical preparation. Priority is to provide patient care. Consider the safety of yourself and team first. Safety begins with the proper mindset and personal protective gear. Equipment and gear should be appropriate to anticipated hazards. Protective gear may include turnout gear, helmets, hearing protection, fire extinguisher, blood and fluid impermeable gloves, leather go gloves over disposable gloves. So anytime you are near any extrication um, process, you might you will probably be required to wear um, at least um, safe excuse me eye protection. Um, so if you have some goggles, throw throw those on. Vehicle safety systems can become hazards after a collision. Shock absorbing bumpers may be loaded and can release and injure you. Approach vehicles from the side. Manufacturers are required to install airbags in all new cars. Airbags fill with a non-harmful non gas on impact and quickly deflate. Um, so always be aware if the airbags have not deflated before in a car accident. This may pose a risk to uh, the rescuers on scene. Airbags are located in the steering wheel and in the dash in front of the passenger. Side impact airbags may be located in the doors or seats. Airbags should be deployed and deflated by the time you arrive. Non-deployed airbags may spontaneously inflate while you provide patient care. Uh, haze inside vehicles in which the airbags have deployed is caused by cornstarch or talc. Used to prevent minor skin irritation by reducing the friction between the occupant's skin and the airbag. Use protective gear, including eye protection, to reduce the risk of eye or lung irritation from the substance. Fundamentals of extrication. Your primary concern is safety. As with any call, your always um, first priority is safety for yourself and your partner. Your primary roles are to provide emergency medical care, present, prevent further injury to the patient. You may provide care as extrication goes on around you. Extrication is a removal from entrapment or a dangerous situation or position. Entrapment is a condition in which a person is caught within a closed area with no way out or has a limb or other body part trapped. Ten phases of extrication. Um, here's your table, preparation and route to scene, arrival and scene size up, hazard control, support operations, gaining access, emergency care, removal patient, transfer the patient, and termination. Roles and responsibilities, EMS personnel are responsible for assessing and providing medical care, triaging and packaging patients, providing additional assessment and care as needed once patients are removed, providing transport to the ED. <laughs> the rescue team is responsible for securing and stabilizing the vehicle, providing safe entrance and access to the patients, extricating any patients, Law enforcement personnel are responsible for controlling traffic, maintaining order at the scene, and establishing and maintaining a perimeter. Firefighters are responsible for extinguishing fire, preventing additional ignition, ensuring scene safety, and removal, removing uh, spilled fluid or any other liquids. Um, so usually when they get on scene, they're going to see if their airbags uh, have been deployed. Uh, if the car is still running, we're going to turn the car off and also probably cut the line um, to the ignition or the to the airbags to make sure that they don't go off and then any fluids they actually carry kitty litter um, they're gonna throw on top of any gas oil or any other fluids that may um, be on scene uh, 
So preparation, preparing for an incident required extrication involves pre-incident training with rescue personnel, various types of rescue situations. Rescue personnel must routinely check extrication tools and their response vehicles. Reduces the possibility of equipment failure at an emergency scene. So their responsibility is the same as yours. Every day, uh, every at the start of every shift, you're going to check your tools, make sure they run properly, um, make sure there's no problems uh, starting the tools, and also make sure they're in good working order. In route to the scene, procedures and safety precautions similar to those in the phases of an ambulance call are used when responding to a rescue incident. Arrival and scene size up. Position the ambulance to block the scene from oncoming traffic. Use only essential warning lights. Do not park where you'd be blocked in. Uh, so we anticipate, uh, try and have two routes of egress um, or exit. Back of the ambulance should point toward it. the scene to facilitate patient transport at a hazardous materials incident. Park uphill and upwind from the hazard. Put on PPE and look for passing cars before exiting your vehicle. Make sure the scene is properly marked and protected. Request assistance from law enforcement. They should ensure the road is closed. Your job is patient care, but you may need to direct traffic until other units arrive. Size up is an ongoing process of information gathering and scene evaluation. Pay attention to down electrical lines, leaking fluids, fire, and broken glass. Identify additional resources needed. <coughs> Situational awareness is ability to recognize possible issues and act proactively to avoid a negative impact. During a 360 walk around, 360 degree walk around and look for mechanism injury down electrical lines, leaking fuels or fluids. Smoke or fire, broken glass, trapped or ejected patients, the number of patients and vehicles involved. While looking at the vehicle, no damage. Bent steering wheel may indicate significant face and or thoracic trauma. Imprints in the dashboard may indicate lower extremity injuries. Lift deployed airbags to see if there is deformity to the steering wheel or dashboard, which may indicate the patient struck the, the structure after the airbag deflated. Note damage to the vehicle and restrained patients may have contact injuries as well as secondary injuries. Check windshield for spider web pattern or shattered glass, indicating possible head, face, or neck injuries. Include findings in your documentation. Use the information to maintain a high index of suspicion. Uh, remember what index of suspicion is. Um, on certain accidents or certain mechanisms of injury, uh, you're going to suspect certain types of injury. Uh, so always look for bent steering wheel, spidering of the windshield, uh, and seat belts, airbags, and intrusion on which side of the vehicle. Evaluate the need for additional resources such as extrication equipment, fire department, law enforcement, hazmat unit, utility company uh, for any down power lines that they may have to cut off the electricity for, advanced life support units or paramedics, air transport, other potential hazards. Look for spilled fuel and other flammables, electrical short or damaged battery, rain, sleet or snow, crashes that occur on hills, violence. Coordinate your efforts with rescue teams and law enforcement. Communicate with the rescue team. Start talking to the incident commander as soon as you arrive. You may become a member of the rescue team. Hazard control. Down electrical lines are a common hazard at vehicle crash scenes. Never attempt to move them. Instruct the patient to remain in the vehicle until power is shut off. Remain in the safe zone outside of the danger zone, uh, hot zone. Uh, you're probably going to stay outside the warm zone as well. Um, that's going to be where you're going to decontaminate patients. Um, and that's going to be the job of firefighters or hazmat personnel. A hot zone is an area where individuals can, individuals can be exposed to sharp metal edges, broken glass, toxic substance, substances, radiation, explosion of hazardous materials. Yeah. So this does happen a lot as well. Uh, patients crash into electrical poles. Um, and they break and they have down power lines. So you see this power line is in contact with the car and it looks like it's still going to be on. So you're going to park away from the ambulance, or excuse me, from the um, scene of the accident. You're going to call for the uh, utility company or the electrical company uh, before you start trying to assess this patient. 
make sure those wires are turned off. Uh, remember, protect yourself and your partner. Family members and bystanders can also create hazards. The danger zone is off limits to bystanders. The vehicle can also be a hazard. Automobile on its side or roof can be a danger. Rescue personnel can stabilize the car. Ensure that the car is in park with the parking brake set and the ignition turned off. Both battery cables should be disconnected to minimize the possibility of sparks or fire. Uh, so this is what I was talking about earlier. Um, usually fire will turn off the battery cables, um, especially with these electrical cars as well. Um, they're going to disconnect the battery to make sure there's no sparks or anything that could electrocute any of the, the rescuers on scene. Alternative fuel vehicles powered by electricity and electricity gasoline hybrids are fuels such as propane, natural gas, methanol, or hydrogen. Disconnect the battery in all cases. Um, this is very important. Batteries may be in the trunk or under the seats, maybe more than one battery. Hybrid vehicle systems have batteries with a higher voltage, may take up to 10 minutes to de-energize after the main battery is turned off. Avoid high voltage cables, typically orange, and components. Damaged high voltage batteries may give off toxic fumes. Do not approach the vehicle if unusual odor is detected. Retreat if, ex if you experience burning in your eyes or throat. Support operations. Support operations include lighting the scene. Establishing tool and equipment staging areas, marking helicopter landing zones, fire and rescue personnel will work together on these functions. Gaining access, critical phase of extrication, make sure that the vehicle is stable and hazards are eliminated or controlled. Check with the incident commander and enter only after these conditions are met. Exact way to gain access depends on the situation. Identify safest, most efficient way to gain access. There are multiple patients. Locate and rapidly triage each patient. So this is going to be considered your starring of the windshield. Um, looks like a maybe an airbag deployed right here. So you want to know if the patient has a seatbelt on. Um, if they don't have a seatbelt on, they might hit their head on the, uh, the windshield. That cause a a neck injury or C-spine injury and then also we want to check the uh, steering wheel make sure that's not bent to determine the exact location and position of the patient consider is the patient in a vehicle or some other structure is the vehicle or structure damaged what hazards exist that pose a risk and what position is the vehicle on what type of surface is it apt to roll or tip we always want to make sure the vehicle is stable before you try and start extricating a patient because um, that vehicle could roll onto you or roll uh, downhill and cause another accident um, and, or trap the patient further. As patient's conditions change, you may have to change your course of action. Rapid vehicle extrication may be needed to quickly remove a patient if the environment is threatening or if the patient needs CPR. CPR is not effective if the patient is sitting up. You may have to move a patient to a supine position on a long backboard. A team of experienced EMTs should be able to perform rapid ex extrication in one minute or less. Keep the patient safe. A heavy fire-resistant blanket can protect from breaking glass, flying particles, tools, or other hazards. A long backboard may be used as a shield. Talk to the patient. Explain your steps. Uh, remember, always talk to your patient. Let, let the patient know what you're doing. Um, and how you might move the patient. <clears throat> Keep heat, noise, and force to a minimum. So here we have another picture. Doesn't look like airbags have gone up, but she may have hit her head. Um, we have some spider in her star into the windshield. And this patient's going to be need to put in a C collar. Simple access. Trying to access the patient as quickly and simply as possible without using tools or breaking glass. Cars are built for easy entry and exit. The rescue team should provide access. If the rescue team has not yet arrived, use tools available in the ambulance. Use all door handles or roll down the windows before using other methods. Uh, we, There's a saying, um, try before you pry. Try and open the door, see if it's unlocked first before you start uh, using any tools to try and pry that door open. Uh, the door might just be unlocked. 
Complex access requires special tools such as hand, pneumatic, and hydraulic devices. Requires special training, includes breaking windows or removing the roof. These advanced skills are typically performed by a specialized team. So here it's kind of hard to see, but these are the, the jaws of life. Um, so you see this kind of triangle area right here. Uh, you're going to put the tip in between the uh, area you're trying to open, and then it's going to expand, uh, and it's going to actually open up for you. It's going to open up um, the door if needed, or whatever they're trying to open up. These are very powerful uh, devices. Very heavy, too. Emergency care, performing primary assessment, provide care before further extrication, provide manual stabilization to the spine, open the airway, provide high flow oxygen, assist or provide for adequate ventilation, control any significant external bleeding, treat all critical injuries, address life-threatening external hemorrhage before airway and breathing. Removal of patient, coordinate with rescue personnel to determine the best removal route multi-step process that is intensive in terms of the number of rescue personnel involved, the equipment used, and the effort required to prevent further injury or harm. So vehicle extrication techniques, uh, complex access. Uh, this is more going to be reserved for fire or your truck companies. Uh, brake and ga gas pedal displacement, dashboard roll-up, um, door removal, roof opening and removal, seat displacement, Steering column displacement, steering wheel cutting. You should participate in the preparation for patient removal. Determine the urgency of extrication. Determine the position of, to best protect the patient. Determine how you will move the patient to the backboard and then the stretcher. Determine the extent of the injuries. Your input is essential so that the rescue team plans an extrication that protects the patient from further harm impractical to imply extremity splints within the vehicle. Often you will be placed in the vehicle alongside the patient. Be sure to wear proper PPE. So always be in contact with, with fire personnel about what's the best way to remove the patient. Transfer the patient, perform a complete primary assessment once the patient is free, make certain that the spine is manually stabilized. Apply a cervical collar if not already done. Move the patient in a series of smooth, slow, controlled steps with designated stops. One person should be in charge. Choose a path that requires the least manipulation. Ensure that everyone understands the steps and is ready. Move only on the team leader's command. So it's the same thing as rolling a patient onto a backboard. The person at the top um, or person at the head is going to call out the commands. Move the patient as a unit. Make sure everyone's on the same page. Continue to protect the patient from any hazards. So here we have um, a lady being pulled out of the car. Uh, we, we have someone holding C-spine still because the patient's not on the backboard yet. So they're probably going to slide a backboard underneath her and make it a little easier to get her out. Termination. Termination involves returning emergency units to service. All equipment used on the scene must be checked. Check and clean the ambulance, replace and use supplies, complete all necessary reports. Uh, so anything used on scene, you want to make sure to restock it. Anything out of the jump bag or the, uh, the cardiac monitor. You want to make sure that everything's replaced for the next call. And you're back in service and ready to go. And also everything is cleaned especially for traumatic events. Uh, you might get some leftover glass from the patient on your gurney or blood. Uh, so always check your equipment. Specialized rescue situations. Sometimes a patient can be reached only by special teams. Specialized team skills include cave rescue, combined space rescue, cross field and trail rescue, park rangers, dive rescue. Missing person search and rescue, mine rescue, mountain rock and ice climbing rescue, ski slope and cross country or trail snow rescue, structural collapse rescue. Specialized weapons and tactics or a SWAT team, technical rope rescue, low and high angle rescue, trench rescue, water and small craft rescue, white water rescue. Personnel needs special technical skills and equipment, may contain hidden dangers, not safe to include untrained personnel. 
A rescue group is trained and on call for certain types of technical rescues made up of individuals from one or more departments. Many members are also trained as EMTs. Check with the incident commander to see if the technical rescue group has been summoned. The incident commander has overall command of the scene on, and the field. Uh, one member must be clearly in charge. A lack of identifiable leadership hinders rescue efforts. No incident commander is present. Follow local commands. So you guys will learn about this. The ICS system, um, it's a way that uh, keeps everything in structure, uh, especially if you have multiple uh, a multitude of agencies on scene um, uh, depends on where you uh, where you guys apply for or where you guys get hired uh, they will require you guys to do an ICS 100 class maybe ICS 100 200 and possibly 7 and 800 um, they're, they're classes that you could actually Google if you guys want to go ahead and do it um, Google ICS 100 and there's classes you could take online it's just a PowerPoint uh, you may have to watch a couple of videos and then you take a test at the end um, and you go ahead and get your ICS 100 that way when you arrive you will be directed or led to the staging area take a long backboard and or basket stretcher jump kits and other equipment set up your equipment at the staging area perform a primary assessment as soon as the rescue team brings a patient to you Packaging and carrying the patient back to the ambulance requires a joint effort. Remember, everyone's moving as one. Um, communicate. Um, let everyone know on scene what you're doing. How are you going to move the patient? A search and rescue an ambulance is usually summoned to the command post when a person is lost outdoors and a search effort is initiated. Your role is to stand by at the command post until the missing person or persons are found. Once you're briefed on the situation, isolate and prepare the equipment you may need. Leave the prepared equipment in the back of the ambulance to protect it from the weather. You may be asked to stay with the family or of the lost individual. Gather medical history and communicate to those in charge. Only the incident commander should communicate any news or progress to the family. Set your radio at a discreet volume. Um, so this is a good way to get sample history. Get it out of the way. Um, allergies, meds, history. And then when they talk about setting your radio at a discreet volume. Uh, you don't want family to hear any bad news over the radio uh, so tr try and keep it at a low volume once the missing person is found you will be guided by search personnel to the location where you can be in treatment you may need to relocate the ambulance or use an all-terrain vehicle ensure that the equipment is evenly distributed among providers ensure pace is maintained such that all can stay together easily Trench rescue. Many cave-ins and trench collapses have poor outcomes for victims. Collapses usually involve a large areas of falling dirt that weigh approximately 100 pounds per cubic foot. Victims cannot fully expand their lungs and may become hypoxic. Risk of secondary collapse is a concern. Safety measures can reduce the potential for injury. Park response vehicles at least 500 feet from the scene. All vehicles should be turned off. Road traffic should be diverted from the 500 foot area. Other hazards include down electrical wires and broken glass or water lines. Construction equipment may be unstable and could fall into the cave in or trench. Witnesses to the incident should be identified, may be valuable in providing information. Assist non trap individuals from the area. Do not enter a trench deeper than four feet without proper shoring in place. Basically, what shoring is is going to keep the, um, the trench or hole. Uh, open uh, just so it doesn't collapse on you and you become a second victim during extrication of survivors medical personnel trained in cave-in and trench collapse will provide most medical care be prepared to receive patients from extrication tactical emergency medical support law enforcement officers usually ensure scene safety sometimes a special weapons and tactics SWAT team is needed to secure an area hostage incidents Barricaded subjects, snipers, many communities have incorporated specially trained EMTs, paramedic nurses, and physicians into police SWAT units. Um, especially the larger areas or larger cities, you're going to have at least um, one paramedic or nurse or physician uh, 
along with those SWAT units, especially on uh, on raids. When called to the scene, determine the location of the command post and report to the incident commander. Lights and sirens should be turned off. The command post is usually located in an area that cannot be seen by the suspect and is out of the range of possible gunfire. Remain in this area. Planning measures are key. Have the incident commander identify the specific location of the incident. The incident commander should determine a safe location to meet up with the SWAT team if an injury occurs. Designate helicopter landing zones. Identify the quickest route to the closest hospital, burn center, or trauma center. So remember, always know the hospitals in your area. Always know the hospitals outside of the area or the county. Um, we don't have a burn center in this county. We gotta know uh, which hospital to take certain patients to. Structure fires. In most areas an ambulance is dispatched with a fire department apparatus. A fire in a house or other building is considered a structure fire. Determine if any special route is needed because of the fire. Ask the incident commander where the ambulance should be staged far enough away from the fire to be safe. Cannot block or hinder other arriving equipment. Cannot be blocked in. Should be close enough to be visible so patients can be brought to it easily. Determine if there are any injured patients or if you have been called to stand by. Search and rescue in a burning building requires special training and equipment performed by teams of firefighters in full turnout gear and CBA. They bring patients out of the burning building to the area where the ambulance is staged. Stay with the ambulance unless otherwise instructed. The ambulance should leave only if transporting a patient or if the incident commander released it. Sometimes a scene may be further complicated by hazardous materials. Hazardous materials pose a threat to you and the others at the scene, mm. as well as a much larger area and population. So proper protective equipment will vary depending on the hazards encountered, which pieces of equipment should be utilized during all patient contacts. What's the first thing you're going to put on uh, for every call? So C, the importance of wearing blood and per fluid per and permanent gloves at all times during patient contact cannot be emphasized enough. If you're involved with extrication, you should wear a pair of leather gloves over your disposable gloves. That way your disposable gloves do not rip. What is the first phase of extrication? <laughs> so B, there are 10 phases of extrication. Preparation is the first. Preparing for an incident requiring extrication involves training for the various types of rescue situations your teams might face. Just as you must check the equipment on the ambulance, rescue personnel must routinely check the extrication tools in the response vehicle to ensure proper operation. <laughs> Excuse me. Preparation reduces the possibility of equipment failure at a scene. As you approach an unconscious patient who is still in a wrecked vehicle, you note that there is a power line entangled in the wreckage of the vehicle. You should... Do we go... not? near down power lines. Would we stage on this type of call? So A, never attempt to access the patient until you are certain that the vehicle is stable and that any hazards have been identified and removed. Common hazards at a motor vehicle crash include leaking gasoline, power lines over the vehicle, and engine fires. A two-door passenger car struck a tree while driving approximately 50 miles an hour. The doors are badly damaged and jammed and the driver appears to be unconscious inside the vehicle. Enter the vehicle by breaking the back window is an example of what? <laughs> Remember there's two types of access. Which one does this fall under? So B, complex access requires the use of special tools and special training and includes breaking windows or other forcible entry. Simple access does not involve the use of any tools. Examples of simple access includes opening a door or rolling down a window. So a 30-year-old semi-conscious man is pinned by the steering wheel of his badly wrecked vehicle. Once access has been gained to the patient, the EMT should...
So C, unless there is an immediate threat of fire, explosion, or other danger, he should perform a primary assessment and treat all immediate life threats as soon as they have gained access to the patient. After correcting any immediately life-threatening problems, extrication should begin. While the EMT is in a vehicle assessing the patient, the rescue team should be... So A, while the patient is being assessed, the rescue team should be assessing the degree of entrapment and determine the safest, easiest way to extricate. Once assessment of the patient is complete, the extrication can commence. Proper removal of a critically injured patient from an automobile involves... So C, to ensure that each rescuer is positioned so he or she can lift and properly carry the patient at all times. Move the patient a series of sm smooth, slow, controlled steps with stops designed in between to allow for any repositioning or adjustments as needed. Move the patient as a unit and resist the temptation to move the mobilization device instead. So remember, communication. Uh, while you're moving the patient uh, with all the, the caregivers involved, Man has been sucked inside the bin of a grain silo and is trapped. Which of the following rescue teams is most appropriate to request? Do you guys know what a silo is? That might be good to know uh, for this question. So D, of the technical rescue teams list, a confined rescue team would be the most appropriate to request for help. Grain silos are confined spaces that such teams are specially trained to operate in. Trench rescue teams are trained to deal with cave-ins and trench collapses. If your local fire department is trained at combined space rescue, they should be notified. You spawn to a wooded area to help search for a child who has been missing for approximately 24 hours. Which of the following equipment should you leave in the ambulance? So D, when participating in a search and rescue after large equipment that is not easily carried, i.e. backboard wheeled stretcher should be left in the ambulance. You're dispatched to the scene of a trench collapse. Upon arriving at the scene, your ambulance should be parked at least how many feet away from the incident? We've said this numerous times before in this uh, presentation. So B, when arriving at the scene of a cave-in or trench collapse, response vehicle should be parked at least 500 feet from the scene. Because vibration is a primary cause of secondary collapse, all vehicles, including on-scene construction equipment, should be turned off. In addition, all traffic should be diverted from the 500 feet safety area.